With the new M1 Max being launched, people are wondering how much storage they should buy or are wondering if the storage they bought is enough. Well, I have a possible solution that I've been using to save myself money when upgrading. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Tech Car Moon, we uncover tech at home and in video. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more. And today I have the Sabrent Thunderbolt SSD drive and I'm gonna see if it's a good solution for you. Just to let you know, I did buy this with my own money. Unfortunately, they didn't send one out to me. So if you wanted to upgrade any of the storage solutions on the M1 Max to let's say one that terabyte, that would cost you an additional $400. And the two terabyte option, which is the top option, will cost you an extra $800. That's quite a lot. Well, this SSD costs much less than that, and you won't be losing out on almost any speeds. I will get into speeds in a moment, but the one terabyte option of this model retails normally for for around $299, thanks to everything going on in the world. But Amazon has dropped this under $230 several times throughout the year, saving you more than $170 compared to upgrading it to the one terabyte from Apple directly. And if you go for the two terabyte model, this normally retails or is hovering around the $449 mark. But again, this has dropped under $370 several times throughout the year, giving you an even bigger saving of $400 and $30, again, compared to upgrading it through Apple. Now, thanks to, obviously, like I said, the world events, stock has been a little bit up and down, but if you pick these up at the right time, you will pick up a great deal. And also, just to let you know, this is available up to eight terabytes. So if two terabytes just isn't enough from Apple, and this is what was stopping you from grabbing yourself up an M1 Mac, then this could be your perfect solution. So as you can see, it's a great deal, but is it as good as the internal SSDs? Well, let's run through some of the specs and some of my findings. This is a Thunderbolt and USB 3.2 drive, meaning that when you connect it to your Mac, you can get speeds of up to 40 gigabits per second, and it will automatically switch between Thunderbolt and USB, meaning that if your computer doesn't have a Thunderbolt port, your drive will still work with no additional drivers, like a lot of others out there. When it's connected to USB, you'll get speeds of up to 900 megabytes per second, and through Thunderbolt, you will see speeds of up to 2,700 megabytes per second. But is this really the case in the real world? Let's start with a benchmark of the internal SSDs of both the M1 MacBook Air and the M1 MacBook Pro. And we see write speeds of around 2,100 megabytes per second and read speeds of around 2,700 megabytes per second. So the internal speeds are very fast. Now let's compare that to the one terabyte Sabrent drive. On the write speeds, we see 1,000 800 megabytes per second, which is nearly twice as fast as the popular Samsung T7 SSD drive. And when we look at the read speeds, it's over 2,400 megabytes per second. This is extremely fast, but it doesn't stop there because the SLC cache on these uh, Sabrent drives are huge, like better than almost any other Thunderbolt drive I've ever tried. The SLC cache, for those who don't know, to explain it simply, is the amount of data that it can write at full speed before having to slow down its speed. You might have seen this when you, let's say, copied a one gigabyte file and it transfers very quickly, but then when you go ahead and copy, let's say, a 50 or 100 gigabyte file, it slows down quite a lot. Well, with the Sabrent one terabyte drive, you'll get 240 gigabytes of SLC cache, meaning that anything up to 246 gigabytes, you will get the full speed of the drive. And if you go up to to let's say the two terabyte uh, version of this, you'll get up to 500 gigabytes before it slows down. And if you are a data hungry user and you opt for the four or eight terabyte versions, you will have up to one terabyte of SLC cache, which is super impressive for how much these things actually cost, especially compared to other Thunderbolt uh, drives in the market. Just for reference, the popular Samsung T7 drive, one terabyte and two terabyte versions, approximately have 40 to 80 gigabytes 
gigabytes of SOC cache respectively. So that's a lot less than what this thing has. The Sabron XTRMQ drive, which is a really long name, is built really well and is so much smaller than almost any other drive that I've used with this amount of performance. And this makes it perfect for traveling or leaving on your desk because it's just so small and pocketable. It's built out of aluminium and has these two rubber feet to make sure it doesn't slide around. And I've even made a 3D printable holder so that when I'm working uh, on my computer, it doesn't have to sort of hang off the side of my drive. I will leave a link down in the description below if you want to make it yourself and if you have a 3D printer, obviously. So in terms of the real world performance, I mean, this thing has never slowed down on me. This drive was fast enough for 4K, 6K and 8K video editing, plus all my other intensive tasks. Now it does get a little bit warm when it's used heavily Heavily, but it's nothing out of the ordering for me. Plus a huge benefit for me is that I get almost internal like speeds on a Mac, but I can use it on almost any computer. Plus when it comes to upgrading your computer or stuff like that, you can continue using this. So it means that you're not having to pay for that two or four or eight terabyte upgrade every single time you upgrade your computer or switch computers. So for someone like me who has to switch computers very often for trying new uh, products out or new Macs out, I would be spending an absolute fortune. So having something like this that allows me to have something that's as fast as an internal SSD or almost as fast as an internal SSD, but without Without having to obviously make that upgrade every single time is fantastic. I really highly recommend this drive. But there we have it. As always, this is a discussion. So please leave a comment down below on what you think of this drive and whether you're going to pick yourself up one of these. And if you are going to pick yourself up, I'll leave links down in the description below. Hopefully they'll be in stock. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Tech Carmoon. Drop me a like on this video if you've enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. But if you want to see more from me right now, you guys know what to do. Click on one of these two videos. I know you'll like them. Go ahead, just click it. Anyway, everyone, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.